I think the framers would have envisioned an AK-47 when they wrote the Second Amendment? Uh, I think it would have been difficult to envision the type of uh, conflict and wars we would have had to face to, you know, continue to, you know, protect the forefathers, you know, constitution. It's, you know, it's too far back to know what would have taken place. I, I may be misunderstanding you. You support that whatever it takes to defend freedom, but you don't def you don't necessarily support AK-47s being unregulated because of the Second Amendment. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a, you know, a fine line. So your personal gun fetish is more important than promoting public safety? And it's, it's, it's needs to be protected, the Second Amendment, as far as, you know, what would be the means to protect us for, you know, the type of stuff that comes against us. But it's, it's to take away one particular weapon based on what we're seeing isn't just justified. It's not justified. No, I don't think so. I think it's because it's not the it's not the weapon. It's not the gun that's causing the crimes. It's the mental, uh, you know, mental dysfunction that we're having. With there's just so much going on in this in our country where we don't have enough support for mental illness. But what are Republicans doing to fix this mental health crisis? I mean, surely it's not voting against bills that fund mental health programs. There was a period, though, for 10 years where the United States essentially banned AK-47s and the number of mass shootings went down. Yeah, again, those are all, you know, um, things that, you know, has happened over time. But again, it's like the mental illness is the real, the real fight we're fighting right now. We need support for all the people in the world. Oh, so universal health care, where regardless of your situation, you can go and get mental health treatment? Oh, but I guess just Republicans like to talk about it instead of do something about it. I come from a place where uh, all of my friends have guns, many of them use ARs. I guess my question is, is your concern as a, as a federal official, as a lawmaker, as somebody who legislates, that something like that maybe diminishes uh, the impact of what this moment is and kind of the conversations that's happening, uh, at least if you're trying to reach a resolution on issues? Well, if Joe Biden is interested in reaching a resolution on the issue, let him deal with the southern border. We have drugs coming across the southern border. And, and this crisis, this mental health crisis that we have in this country um, has a, a direct relationship to our drug laws being loosened um, and the, the lack of funding at the state level for mental health services. Wow, that was a complete 180. But I guess that's what Republicans do best. Deny, deflect, distract. Look over there. Now, America's on this cursed tilt a whirl where we're always spinning back around yet once again with another mass shooting and another mass shooting and more thoughts and prayers and more thoughts and prayers. And we never seem to end this chaos and madness. And it leaves many Americans asking the question, why hasn't anything been done? And what do we need to do to fix this uniquely American problem? Well, I've come up with four reasons why we haven't seen any action on implementing common sense gun safety legislation. And the first reason is money. According to campaign finance disclosures, Republicans have taken $4.7 million from the gun lobby in just 2022 alone, and consequently $8.7 million in 2020. And even though 81% of Americans, whether Democratic, Republican, Independent, support expanding universal background checks to include sales, private sales at gun shows, gun rights groups and gun manufacturers continue to outspend even modest gun control groups by hundreds of thousands of dollars, propping up Republican lawmakers like Steve Scalise, John Cornyn, Ted Cruz, Ron Johnson, and attempting to defeat Democrats like Catherine Cortez Masto, Mark Kelly, John Ossoff, Raphael Warnock. Many conservatives make their gun a part of their identity, their personality. I mean, just ask Lauren Boebert about her restaurant, Shooter's Grill, where she was encouraging waitresses to be carrying a gun on their person right next to their notepad that they use to take your order. Nothing like ordering a hamburger and then also staring down the barrel of a gun. But also they make this tool, this deadly tool, a part of their personality where they even put it in their Christmas card photos, recruiting their kids to hold assault weapons along with them and pose for their Christmas cards. And yet they have the audacity to claim that they are pro-life. Seriously, give me a break. ATF, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. 
In Western Colorado, we call that a fun weekend. But DC bureaucrats have used this agency to infringe on the rights of the American people. The Second Amendment is absolute and it's here to stay. A recent report states that Americans own 46% of the world's guns. I think we need to get our numbers up, boys and girls. And the third reason is gun access. Without adequate gun safety laws and the prolific ease of access in order to obtain guns, no wonder guns fall into the hands of citizens prone to violence. And see, Republicans will respond, oh, well, guns don't kill people. People kill people. Yes, but people kill people with guns. And if it's the ease of access, that's the problem. Now, I've had many discussions with conservatives where they'll say, oh, well, if you want to ban guns, why don't we just ban cars then? Let's just ban cars. People die from cars. And I say, okay, yes. But it's not like we don't have laws put in place to reduce the casualties, unintended casualties from cars. We have laws set in place where you have to go and get a license, take a test, renew it. You, you cannot drive while under the influence. You cannot drive over a certain speed. You must wear your seatbelt. You must stop if you see a school bus dropping kids off, even if you're on the other side of the road. Point is, we have laws set in place to reduce the casualties from cars, yet we don't seem to have laws that reduce the casualties from guns. And you have the audacity to claim that we're the insane ones? And the last and final reason is the lack of political will and old leadership. Look, two-thirds of our senators are at or over the age of 60, so almost about retirement age. And considering that gun violence is affects younger people at a disproportionate, disproportionately higher rate, it's no wonder that our leadership feels disconnected from the modern American problem. And also, the average age of our current House of Representatives is 57 years old, meaning they are vastly out of touch with issues that affect young people. So for those of you who are looking for a solution to this problem, do what you can. Call your lawmakers. Email them. Talk about your concerns. Do relational organizing with your community. Send and share this video with people. Because the more that we have an outcry as the public, the more that they have to listen, even if it means that we have to scream at the top of our lungs for the most minimal amount of progress to be done. So do what you can to inform your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, and let's actually demand better from our government. My name is Scott Johnson. You can find more of me on my YouTube and on my TikTok, which are both in the description box below. I'm a Southern political gay guy on both. Do it so you can see me and my crown. And most importantly, do not forget to smash that subscribe button to Rebel HQ and have a wonderful day.